Let's go back to our database and see the rundown test. As you can see we have two signals, the blue one comes from the horizontal accelerometer and the green one comes from the vertical accelerometer. We will hide the green one. As you can see there is a part of the signal where the motor was still running, and a second part where the motor was stopping. I'll make a zoom on the first part of the signal. Note again that the spectrum has been recalculated. Now we can see the frequency when the motor was running. As we move over the signal the spectrum recalculates, this way we can see the speed on each second of the recording. Now I am moving with the arrow keys. Now for example you can see that there is an increment on the amplitude between the seconds 12 and 14, this is probably a critical frequency. We are going to make a zoom on it to see this frequency. Now let's set a marker and copy this image to generate a report. Let's take a look now to the green signal. This is recorded from the vertical transducer. Here you can make the same study, there are also increments on the amplitude along the graphic. Make a zoom on them and see the critical frequencies. Remember that there may be many critical frequencies on the same machine. Now we are going to generate the orbit of this point, to do this remember that you always need two signals on the same reporting, otherwise you won't be able to generate it. Now this orbit is naturally different on each second because remember that this is a rundown orbit, don't expect to see it constant during the whole recording. We are going to reduce the time so we will see only a segment of a few milliseconds. Now we click on the play button to see the orbit as it was recorded. You can see that sometimes the orbit gets flat, these are structural critical frequencies, and you know now the exact axis of them. Now you can see that the orbit may be distorted because of other frequencies. If you want to see the orbit, at an exact frequency you can make a filter. Finally, let's take a look to the Bodhi example. As you can see, there are also two signals here. The blue one is from the accelerometer and the green one is now from the optical sensor. Again, we can see an increment on the amplitude, if we make a zoom on the spectrum, it recalculates and we can easily see the frequency. This is probably the resonance frequency of this machine but we cannot be sure unless the phase changes 180 degrees. There are many curves that can be plotted in a Bode diagram. 
the most important are amplitude versus speed and phase versus speed. In this case as you can see, the highest amplitude is found at 2199 RPMs. Now let's see the other curves. The first one is the RPM curve versus time. It shows how quickly the motor was stopping. The second one is the amplitude versus time. Observe that the highest amplitude on the green line corresponds to 2244 RPM according to velocity curve. The fourth curve is the phase versus time and the most important is the last one. Phase versus RPM. If you move the cursor along the graphic, you will see that the angular gauge meter located on the left panel changes. This angular gauge shows the angle. As you can see, there is a difference of 180 degrees between moments before the highest peak and moments after the highest peak. This is the confirmation of the critical frequency. This icon here, shows the whole bearing table of the software. Here you may see the size of each bearing, as well as the dynamic and static loads and some other useful information. For now I think that we will leave it here for the vibration analysis. There are some other tools like diagnosis, cross power spectrum, frequency response function, automatic reports that will be shown in another video. Now we are going to take a look to the balancing formulas. Let's open a new balancing session. In this new window you can choose the speed of your machine, interval and recording time. Now we click OK and the balancing session will be opened. We are not going to make any balancing right now because we already have some video tutorials about this. Please take a look to the links on the description of this video. Right now we are going to show the tools of the balancing calculator. Let's open our balancing calculator. You can see now many tabs, each one of them has a different formula. For example here you have a single plane balancing formula. The second tab is for the two plane balancing, this one is also shown in another video. The third tab is a no phase balancing formula. This method, requires that you place a trial mass in three different positions, shown on the polar graphic. As you can see, the software will draw the number of blades that you select. Once you have all the values of the trial run, three circles will be drawn. The intersection of the three circles will be the place of your correction mass. Here you have a split weight formula in case that you don't have a way to locate a correction mass on the indicated angle. For example if you need a mass of 20 grams at 25 degrees, and you only have six blades to locate it. Then you will need to put 13 grams at 0 degree, and almost 10 grams at 60 degrees. The combined weight formula is exactly the opposite of this last formula. If you have many ways located all over your rotor, you can calculate a single mass with this formula. We have also a drill depth formula. Suppose that you need to remove 20 grams of material from an aluminum pulley, and the diameter of the drill that we'll use is 0.5 inch. We need then to make a hole of 2.352 inches depth. This formula, helps you to calculate the size of a plate. For example, let's say that you need 20 grams, and you have a 1 8 per 1 inch steel plate. then you will have to cut a 1.245 inch length piece of it. We also have a calculator that will help you to calculate the best trial weight for your machine in order to avoid invalid runs. Finally we have a change radius formula. The serial balancing method is a balancing formula 
where you do not need any trial mass, the software shows the angle and correction mass since the first run. There will be another video for this system. Well thank you for watching this video tutorial, and we hope you have enjoyed it.